immediately. Joe with the Alolan Ninetales, Alolan Sandslash, Tapu Koko, Alolan Raichu, Araquanid, and Incineroar. It's obvious, it's Alola. Some really cool synergies in there, and I know a region he really, really likes. Gabby, going after my heart here, opting to go with Hoenn, my personal favorite region as well. And we're gonna see the dual weather on her team. We have that Pelipper paired up with that Ludicolo, and then the Sunsetter in Torkoal as well with the Dusclops Synergy, also pairing with the Metagross, but a little bit of an oddball pick too with that Shininja sitting there. Uh, there's a whole lot of mechanics we're gonna have to think about and consider in this game. We've got, of course, the, the speed weather or terrain pairings from Joe with the Alolan Ninetales, Alolan Sandslash, and the Tapu Koko and Alolan Raichu. Uh, there is, of course, a, a Raquinid there to maybe answer some of the Trick Room. Over on Gabby's side, we've got two weathers, uh, Trick Room as a speed control, and then the awkward, I don't really know how to describe it, but Shedinja Factor, where you have to bring something to answer it and respect it every time you play. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of great pairings and a lot of fantastic synergy with the Pokemon. And both trainers have weather on their team. So I'm curious if we're going to see a little bit of a weather war as well. There's the hail on Joe's side against the rain and the sun on Gabby's, which I mean, the rain and sun's kind of a staple of Hoenn as well. So I'm glad to see those incorporated on our team. Yeah, let's see how this all matches up. There's terrains involved as well. There's a whole lot going on with both of these teams. I think the best way to look at how they interact is to head on into the game and see what these trainers start with and how they want to play these teams. Yeah, I'm so excited to see what's going to be led here. So Gabby going for that Ludicolo to start, but instead of next to the Pelipper, it's going to be next to that Metagross facing down against Joe, who's opting to bring the Tapu Koko and the Alolan Raichu for an electrifying start here. Yeah, these Pokemon just pair up really well, and we've seen it in previous formats. Trainers just getting off to a really early advantage by being able to apply a lot of pressure very, very quickly. The Ludicolo, interesting without the Pelipper. Um, you know, the Pelipper's probably not feeling too safe in the face of two electric types, so good for Gabby to leave it behind. And instead, this Metagross, which actually probably doesn't fear too much at all from, the, you know, the Tapu Koko and the Raichu. Uh, it's just nice and bulky and, and able to put down some pressure. Looks like both trainers uh, starting out, though, with uh, exactly what they want. Uh, nothing switching around. And we're starting off with a Dynamax Tapu Koko. We'll see if Gabby decides to respond with a Dynamax. And that could really set the tone for the early portion of the game. There it is. And I wouldn't be shocked if it was uh, the Metagross going for the Dynamax. Gabby not wanting to be left out, seeing that Tapu Koko out on Joe's side and having that Metagross Dynamax as well. Metagross being able to put so much pressure against these two electric types here. So it'll definitely be able interesting to see how much work it's able to put in. But Lone Raichu starting everything off with a quick fake out into that Ludicolo, which followed up with a max airstream. And if this Ludicolo is no chances, unfortunately, it's it's taken right out. The, yeah, Joe not wanting to mess around there at all with the potential Pelipper switch in to be able to set up the Swiss Swim and, and go from there. So just dealing with the Ludicolo, putting him in a really early Pokemon advantage. But this Metagross could cause problems. Max Quake heading towards the Tapu Koko. Metagross having a really good move pool now, even more than in previous years, including a, a plethora of, of moves that cause problems. Here we're going to see a ground type move and the Max Quake bringing that Koko down very, very low. So uh, really kind of even turn i think even though it was a pokemon knockout uh, gabby's still very much in this and this dustclops could cause some massive problems immediately yeah dustclops metagross a parian that we see in nowadays vgc so definitely one that's going to be a force to be reckoned with in a format like this and the quake for metagross is so big as well not only is it dealing massive damage it's also getting that special defense boost which is going to be so nice against these two pokemon so There's Raichu, a, sorry. There it is. The special <laughs> yeah. defense boost coming right in as that rising voltage does very little. I think that's something so underrated. Not only is it a super effective hit, it's also a stat boost. And uh, yeah, it took that very well. It definitely did. Max Quake again coming out from the Metagross, just looking to eliminate that Tapu Koko, which it is getting another special defense boost. And I mean, pretty difficult here to be taking down. I don't see an easy answer to the Metagross right now, and I think the Metagross is about to get even more going for it from the Dusclops as the Trick Room comes through, and Gabby in a really good position now with just the exceptionally fast Raichu on the field. 
are going to get a look at Joe's team now, though. And the Arachnid Pokemon that does do well in the Trick Room, so could be really important in this matchup. Yeah, the Tapu Koko and the Raichu definitely having the benefit of the speed control before the Trick Room. But being able to get that switch into the Arachnid is definitely going to be nice here, especially against the slow team that Gabby has. But, I mean, this Dusclops, it's such a dangerous move pool. It's so good in Trick Room and... I don't know. It's go Ooh, it's going to go for a bulldoze. So <laughs> getting a nice little chip on the Alolan Raichu, but more importantly, a weakness policy activation on that Metagross. That's huge. The, the, everything is set up right now for this Metagross, even in the last turn of its Dynamax, to just cause as many problems as it likes. The speed drops coming around. Arachnid does get to move, but it goes for Soak, clearly wanting to make the Dusclops a little easier to knock out where possible. Metagross though with a max Mind Storm. This is going to hurt. <laughs> and her it does. Unfortunately, the Arachnid not able to stand up from a plus two boosted Metagross and unfortunately is going to go down after soaking that Dusclops. But now the Dusclops is a water type. I mean, it's going to take a hit from this Raichu, but Rising Voltage not appreciating the terrain switch from that Mindstorm as well. So that's definitely got to hurt from, for Joe's end. That was a really well last, uh, played last turn of Dynamax from Gabby, knowing that she did have the option to control the terrain with the Max Mindstorm after the Tapu Koko had been felled, being able to switch that up and really leave this Raichu struggling to have an impact on the rest of the game, I think. It's uh, it's in a trick room, it doesn't have control of the terrain that it wants either, so uh, it's going to be in a, a bit of a pickle here, and Metagross, you know, still going on the field after all of that all three of its dynamax turns getting a whole lot of attention and it's still got those special defense boosts as well so uh, this metagross might be able to see out the whole game but at least for joe incineroar's in and incineroar has answers to a pokemon like metagross yeah so all be down to where it targets into metagross not wanting to risk anything at all though opting to just go for the protect to kind of see what is happening here is the dust Ops is going to get the chance to fire off a Nightshade and deal some massive chip to that Raichu and the Metagross staying safe as the Incineroar <laughs> targeted into it. A really smart bit of uh, protecting there from Gabby, making sure those protects uh, are, are important and you eat up important attacks. Uh, no, the Raichu does get to land an expanding force thanks to the change in terrain, so uh, that's a nice bit of damage to go down, but the Dusclops still in a great position and the Dusclops able to pick up the Raichu this turn if it wants with just another Nightshade. Raichu not holding on with enough health there. An easy bit of quick maths to, to solve that mystery. Yeah, albeit whether it wants to take it down or not. So the Nightshade coming out and is going to take it down. So no more Raichu, though it wasn't really getting the opportunity to do too much at this point anyways. But Joe going down to one Pokemon still definitely going to hurt. Gets the opportunity to fire off Darkest Lariat, though, into the Metagross, and does take down that threat, at least. Yeah, the Metagross uh, removed, finally, after four turns on the field, doing a, a whole lot of damage. Uh, but this Dusclops still sitting very pretty, and we are going to take a look at the last Pokemon on Gabby's team. The Pelipper was there, something I think Joe was thinking about in turn one, and uh, Pelipper against Incineroar should be a, a pretty easy cleanup for uh, one of Hoenn's favorite Pokemon. Yeah, and Cineroar can do so much work, but probably not too much against this water bird here. I mean, you had to imagine that's in the back with seeing the Ludicolo in the front, but you still have to hope. Dusclops is going to go for a Nightshade yet again. I mean, that's just such consistent chip. Why not? Cineroar, Darkest Lariat is going to target into the Dusclops, but I mean, depending on what this Pelipper does, it has the opportunity to close out this game and Scald it is taking it down. There's Pelipper just showing uh, how important it can be. And it was interesting that Joe actually got to see that from Gabby's team. So a little bit of information he can take heading into game two, something he can maybe consider. And knowing that that weather's there might force him into a change to bring a weather of his own so he can play the game a little bit differently. He is going to have to take a real good hard look for an answer to that Metagross though, as it was so troublesome and just pretty much won the game for Gabby, even though it did get failed at the end. Yeah, I mean, there is the rain mode that the two electric types would have fared so well into, but unfortunately, they don't do as much against that Metagross. So it'll be interesting to see how Joe adapts going into the second game and if there's any adaptations from Gabby. So let's head into the second game to see what he can switch up to try and take down this tremendous force of a Pokemon. 
Uh, Metagross coming right back out in the lead alongside the Pelipper this time. So Gabby immediately saying, I'll actually play the weather game as Joe mixes it up entirely. I'm glad we get to see some sort of weather war going on. The Pelipper, though, sets the drizzle. Not for too long, though, as that Alolan Ninetales gets to overwrite that weather right off of the bat, though, and it sets the hail. And that means that Slush Rush is going to be activated for this Alolan Sand Slash as well. So should be the fastest thing on the field and is definitely going to need to have an impact uh, if it's going to be able to kind of deal with this Metagross. That Metagross was so important. This Pelipper probably looking to switch out, and that's something I think Joe is going to have to try and take advantage of. The Ninetales can set up some really nice Aurora Veil shenanigans and see exactly, you know, how it can play around that. And there it goes. Pelipper leaving the field, realizing it lost the weather war and it has to come back and, and try another time. So Dusclops taking it place, which is very, very scary. I mean, we just saw how much work Dusclops put in in the last game. That consistent Nightshade, the Trick Room, the Bulldoze. So something that Joe's going to want to try and eliminate or counter right off the bat here, because, I mean, I don't think he can afford to let Gabby set up another Trick Room, especially wanting to capitalize off of the Slush Rush and now Dynamax a little and Slam Slash on the field. Joe's team is built around these abilities which in increase your speed, the Slush Rush, the Surge Surfer. Like, it's so big and important to his team and for Gabby to be able to take that away immediately with, with Trick Room does put, cause and, and pose a big challenge to Joe. That, hey, you, you've got to find an answer to this, either before the Trick Room goes up or a way to navigate through the Trick Room. Uh, Gabby, once again, they're realizing how important this Metagross could be. It's obviously going to be able to land super effective hits on both of Joe's Pokemon, so he needs to find an answer and find one soon. Right, so Max Quake coming out into the Metagross. A little bit of a scary play, though. We saw in the last match that the Metagross has that weakness policy, and now the Lowland Sand Slash taking away Dustflop's jobs in terms of the weakness policy activation and activating it for Gabby. Yeah, that Dusclops doesn't need to bulldoze now, it just needs, it can trick room and then start going with the Nightshades. Uh, to help weather the storm though, uh, the Aurora Veil, a bit of a classic, of course, for the Alola Ninetales, one of the reasons it did so well in previous formats. And in exchange for Sand Slash's troubles, it does take a whole lot of damage because of that weakness policy, even with the Aurora Veil in play. At least with the Aurora Veil, the Sand Slash gets to stick around for one more turn, but still a massive amount of damage even through that Aurora Veil. So definitely a little bit of a scary position for Joe here, but with the threat of the Dusclops on the horizon as well. He's gonna have to find an answer to the Dusclops and looking at Joe's move selection, I think there's only one and it's not exactly the most reliable because the Trick Room very, very likely to just go up at the end of this turn. This Metagross potentially able to, to for Max Guard or, or just you know land another attack if it can if it feels it can weather another potential Max Quake from the Sand Slash as well. Uh, some really interesting options here, and it does have the Weakness Policy uh, activated, so wanting to take advantage of that as best possible. Uh, but it's not going to take any damage this turn, as it does just play it safe and wait for the Trick Room. Yeah, I mean, right call there for sure. Why risk the Metagross when you can have it safe in a Trick Room? So, Lola Sand Slash not being able to do much. Blizzard from the Lola Ninetales does get to connect with the Dusclops though, but doesn't get the freeze. I feel like one of the only ways to stop the impeding doom of this Trick Room, but Gabby free to set it up. And now this Metagross is just gonna be even scarier than before. Now nah, this Metagross should be able to just start wreaking havoc in the last turn of its Dynamax. And then of course, uh, anything after that is Sand Slash looking dangerously low and, and potentially able to get picked off this this Dusclops wouldn't be able to do it with the Nightshade we do get to know that Gabby probably doesn't quite know it unless she's really really good at identifying health bars uh, but it's going to be uh, you know really really close and, and after the Dynamax turn this last turn that Sand Slash has uh, then it would be able to get picked up by the Nightshade so uh, certainly some options there and Joe forced I think into maybe trying to find a, a play for the Araquanid in this one. I think that's probably one of the best options because this Ninetales does not want to be facing down the Metagross. Oh, definitely not. So it's going to go back into its Pokeball, all safe and sound. Sand Slash also trying to save itself a little bit here. And sure enough, Nightshade does target into that. The Steel Spike from the Metagross, though, going to be targeting into the Araquanid dealing a sizable amount of damage for a move that's not very effective against it. No, I mean, it's it's trying its best and, uh, you know, taking those hits, but it's still going to really, really hurt after that weakness policy boost. Uh, a whole lot of hail damage going around, so it's uh, 
a little something to, to consider as the Dynamax does end finally. So this Metagross, uh, fractionally less scary, but still pretty scary, I think, if you're Joe. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> Gabby's in the driver's seat right now. Not good for Joe as Draquidid is slow, but the Sand Slash is very, very fast and is not appreciating this Trick Room that's set up at all here. No, this Sand Slash is uh, still in the hail, so it's still going to be in a position that's really, really difficult to even weave a move in now it's on such a low amount of health. Uh, you know, we see it dangerously low, probably not going to be even afforded the opportunity to move in this one, as Metagross keeps playing it safe, even though it's uh, kind of in the driving seat, just wants to see what this Arachnid might have. All right, and the Desclops getting the opportunity to go for the Nightshade. Doesn't look to try and take out the Alolan Sand Slash, but instead targeting into the Spider. But the Sand Slash, even though it got another turn on the field to try and make something happen, targeted into that super protected Metagross here. And then Arachnid, despite living that first Nightshade, is going to go down to that hail. Uh, Gabby, they're playing it very, very wisely, understanding that the hail damage, the residual damage between turns was probably going to help her out a little bit there, and that Arachnid felled, you know, it did get an opportunity to, to try something there, but it targeted the Metagross, uh, same as the Alolan Sand Slash, and Gabby playing it safe there, really wise. Joe, in the menus, looking to see when this Trick Room ends, because we got to look at his last Pokemon, and, and that's not going to fare well in the Trick Room either, so really important for him to find a way to try and work through these last two turns of Trick Room with uh, a winning option available to him. Opting to swap out that Nine Tails anyways, bringing this Tapu Coco out into this Trick Room. And he does get to set the opportunity for the electric terrain, though I don't know if it's going to matter too much. There's a weather war going on right now, not a terrain war. Sand Slash, though, is going to go for that Protect. Yeah, Sand Slash trying to buy a little bit of time, trying to make it through to the end of the Trick Room, I think, and, and protecting is the only way to do it. But Metagross is always going to be able to target the other slot. The Topic Coco not falling to the hail as it stops this turn. But after the weakness policy, just look how much that Iron Head does. This could just be Metagross's game to clean up. Uh, it's going to be able to land super, super effective damage on the Alola Ninetales. Uh, it does so much to the Tapu Coco, and even this Dusclops can put in work just nightshading things and, and tidying them up uh, in this last turn of Trick Room. It's definitely a difficult position, and the Tapu Coco, being an Assault Vest, doesn't actually have access to protect it all, um, so it's, it's going to be acting last of the turn and gets every opportunity to get knocked out before then. Sand Slash, though, switching back out as Ninetales rejoins the field. Joe may be looking for this win uh, condition or some kind of sweep that he can make uh, by having the terrain set or the weather set up. But the Pelipper's in the back. The Pelipper's still sitting there and is going to be able to control the weather at the end of the game for Gabby. So it's not even a, a particularly likely option for the outcome. And of course, Ninetales, we did see when it got frisked earlier, was holding the light clay. So no focus sash to save it there. And uh, Gabby should just be able to wrap this one up on the next turn with that low health Alolan Sand Slash in play. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a Lolan Sand Slash is a Pokemon that could put in work, just unfortunately not against a Metagross. This Metagross has been really good against the six that Joe brought here. So, I mean, the Trick Room's over. It has the, sand, the, the Slush Rush, but I don't know if it can really capitalize off it at this point with 30 HP. No, I mean, it's not going to be able to knock out the Dusclops, and Dusclops should just be able to Nightshade it. This drill run does connect, and Joe finally, similar to game one, gets the Metagross right at the end, exact some revenge on it for, for causing so many problems. Uh, even with the recall, Sand Slash is so low, but it doesn't matter, Dustbox is going to wrap this one up with the Nightshade. And uh, in the local champion battle, it looks like Hoenn reigns supreme over Alola. As it should, um, well fought by both players, but that 